Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. We are in week 10 of this course and so far in this week we have been talking about ODE boundary value problems. In the previous three lectures we have taken the ODE boundary value problem of the nature that you are seeing over here okay and we solved it using three approaches. The first approach was using MATLAB's commands uh, BVP5C. The second approach was using finite differences in order to convert the boundary value problem into a set of linear equations and the third one was using shooting method. Today I am going to talk about some extensions. For example, if the right hand side is a nonlinear function, okay, what do you do? Second extension is if the boundary condition is not a Dirichlet boundary condition but it's a Neumann boundary condition or a mixed boundary condition, then what do you do? I'll talk about this in the next 10 minutes or so, okay? So this was the ODE boundary value problem that we have covered in the last three lectures. This is a linear problem. Why is it linear? It's because this particular function is linear and we don't have anything multiplying uh, the d square t by dz square term, okay? If it's a scalar that multiplies d square t by dz square, of course, it's not a problem. But if it is a function of t that multiplies d square t by dz square, of course, that is a nonlinear equation, okay? So, what if the model is nonlinear? If the model is nonlinear, then this is going to be replaced by some nonlinear function. Uh, let us call that as g of t. Okay, so if you have a case like this, then what do we do? Okay, there are several reasons why you will encounter case like this. In case of a rod conduction type of a problem, one of the cases is because of radiation. Okay, so if it is radiation, you will have sigma epsilon multiplied by t plus 273 to the power 4 minus T A plus 273 to the power 4. Why does 273 come into picture? Because uh, that, that, uh, the radiation is proportional, the radiation flux is proportional to temperature to the power 4 where the temperature is in Kelvin. Another example is where gamma is a function of T. Okay. Usually, gamma has uh, a dependence, gamma uh, can be some kind of a coefficient, gamma naught multiplied by t to the power 0 0.75. That's, that's often times the nature of uh, this particular function. Okay. In BVP 5C, if you recall, there were three elements. One is the uh, uh, rod fun. which gives this particular function. The next was rod BC, which gives the residuals, uh, which gives the boundary condition at z equal to 0 and BC at z equal to 1. Those are coded in rod BC. And the third one is initialization. Because this function is a nonlinear function gt, this does not remain, sorry, this remains the same, this remains the same. The only thing changes is this particular gt, okay. So let us go to MATLAB, okay. We will not solve the problem in MATLAB, but let us look at the uh, rod conduction problem using uh, BVP solution, okay. So this was the code that we had written for the rod conduction problem using BVP 5C. Okay. So, as I said, BVP in it, there is no change, rod BC, there is no change, only in the rod FCN, there is a change. Okay. So, this is rod FCN. Okay. So, where is that change going to be? The change will not be over here. Why? Because dt by dz is equal to small y. Okay, irrespective of whether it's a nonlinear function or a linear function, the first equation remains the same. The second equation is dy by dz. Now, dy by dz instead of this, this will be replaced by the nonlinear function. What I mean by that is you will have the 
this okay now what is y why is that so is because we had defined y equal to capital t and small y or we are defined y as capital t and t dash okay so this is how you write so the only change that happens is going to be in this particular right line and rest everything remains the same and you will be able to solve it using uh, uh, bvp 5c okay okay so let's erase this and okay so now what to do if you are using the other approach that is using the finite difference approach okay if you are using the finite difference approach the first condition is going to remain last condition is going to remain there you go the middle conditions will become t square t by dz square at i equal to g of ti okay now this is going to be t i plus 1 minus 2 t i minus sorry 2 t i plus Now I can take h square and this is what I will get, okay. So what I have is for i equal to 2 to n, okay. So this is the only thing that is going to change, okay. So I will not have a linear equation anymore and I will have to use f solve in order to solve it, okay. So what is going to be my first equation in f solve? The first equation in F solve is going to be T1 minus 100. The second equation in F solve is going to be uh, T3 minus 2 T2 plus T1 minus H square multiplied by G of T1 equal to 0. Second equation, third equation and so on up to nth equation and n plus 1th equation is going to be Tn plus 1 minus 25 equal to 0. Okay? So that is the change that is going to happen in the finite difference solver. Okay, now let us come to the final case. Final case is going to be what if you have other type of boundary conditions. Okay, you might have learnt in your first year undergraduate course that there are three, three types of boundary conditions. The first type is Dirichlet. Okay, these were the examples of Dirichlet boundary conditions. The second type of boundary conditions are what is known as Neumann boundary conditions. An example of Neumann boundary condition is T dash equal to some value. Okay, and the third type of boundary conditions are what is known as mixed boundary condition. And mixed boundary con condition is going to be some phi of T comma T dash is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so that is the example of mixed boundary condition. Of course, mixed boundary condition is more general and in, it encompasses both the Dirichlet and the Neumann boundary condition. Okay, so let us take an example of a Neumann bound, boundary condition. Okay, so where do we where do we have a Neumann boundary condition? So let us say we have this particular rod one end of the rod was kept at 100 degrees Celsius and this instead of being kept at 25 degrees Celsius, let us say that this was insulated. Okay? If the rod is insulated, then this boundary condition is going to be T dash equal to 0. That is the Neumann boundary condition. Okay? So, now how do you handle T dash equal to 0 using BVP 5C and how do you handle using the finite difference approach? Okay? The answer is fairly straightforward. Just give yourself a, a, a few seconds by pausing this video, think about it and then uh, restart the video and try to look at my approach. Okay. So, when it comes to BVP 5C, again let us recap what do we have? We have rod fun, 
which talks about this function. This function remains the same. We have rod BC, which talks about boundary conditions. And this is something that will get changed. And then we have initialization. That is going to remain the same. Okay. So, if we go to MATLAB, what is going to change and what is going to remain the same? Okay. All of this is going to remain the same. Okay. What is going to change is not rod function this time, but it is going to be rod BC. Okay. Now, let us go on to rod BC. Okay. What did rod BC have? Rod BC have the residual for the first, first uh, boundary and residual for the second boundary. Let us look at the first boundary. The first boundary remains uh, t at z equal to 0 or t left okay that's the first boundary the second boundary is is t dash right equal to 0 now what is t dash right t dash right is nothing but y right okay what's y right the small y right that's nothing but capital y second element Okay, so this is going to be y2, this is going to be y1, right. So, let us take a look at that. So, what is going to be the first residual? It is going to be y01 minus 100. What is going to be the second residual? It is going to be y, y12 minus 25. Why y12 is because this is the condition that we need to meet, okay. So, that is the change that you are going to have uh, if you have Neumann boundary condition uh, in, in this problem. Okay. Now, let us talk about the finite difference approach. Now, what happens with the finite difference approach? The left boundary is going to remain T1 equal to 100. The internal conditions for i equal to 2 to n will remain same. Okay. The right boundary is going to be T n plus 1 dash equal to 0. Okay. Now, how do we address this particular boundary condition T n plus 1 dash? Okay. There are two different ways to address this. One way is that you can use backward difference formula. Okay. And the backward difference formula is going to be T n minus, sorry. equal to 0 or you could use a 3 point backward difference formula in which case it is going to be based on T n plus 1, T n and T n minus 1. Okay? And we have done the backward 3 point backward and forward difference formula in week 6 and you can refer to week 6 and you will come to know what that particular equation is going to be. So, if you have this backward difference formula, what is needed is if you go to the rod conduction F d, this guy in the right boundary is going to replace be replaced by a n plus 1 comma n is going to be something a n plus 1 comma n plus 1 is going to be something and b n plus 1 is going to be 0 that is going to be the right boundary condition. Okay. That is all the change that is required. So, if you go from a Dirichlet boundary condition to a Neumann boundary condition that means if instead of temperature being specified if the end of the rod was insulated what is going to happen is rest of the code is going to remain the same. The only place where the code changes is at the right boundary condition. So, you can go over here and make the change in the right boundary condition and then solve the resulting finite difference equation. Okay? So, those are the two cases, two extensions of boundary value problems. Okay? So, with that, I am going to come to this to the end of this lecture. Okay? Uh, let me recap what we have done in ODE boundary value problems. We started off with defi defining ODE boundary value problems. Then in the first lecture, we talked about how to solve ODE boundary value problem, linear ODE boundary value problem with Dirichlet boundary conditions. We solved it using uh, ODE, uh, sorry, using BVP 5C approach, which is a solver uh, av available in MATLAB. Then in the second lecture, we solved the same problem linear. Uh, boundary uh, boundary value problem with 
Dirichlet boundary conditions, we solved it using uh, finite difference approach. In the third lecture, we just talked about uh, the shooting method and how, how the shooting method can be implemented. Uh, the reason for that particular lecture was for the sake of completeness because that is covered in most undergraduate courses as well. It is a very nice tool to learn numerical techniques. In this lecture, what we talked about is practical ex uh, extensions of boundary value problems. That is when you have not a linear equation, but nonlinear equation, what do you do? And instead of having a Dirichlet boundary condition, if you have Neumann or mixed boundary condition, what do you do? Okay. So, those are the things that we discussed in this lecture. Okay. Because I want to keep this week lean, I am not going to talk about uh, the differential algebraic equations in this particular uh, uh, set of lectures. This is going to be the last lecture of week 10. Okay. I am going to give you bonus set of lectures for week 10 okay, that will follow later. This bonus set of, set of lectures are for postgraduate students who, where I am going to cover differential algebraic equations. So, as far as all other students of this course is concerned, the week number 10 is going to end with this particular lecture. Okay? So, with that, I come to the end of this video and indeed the end of week 10 of lecture material. Okay? Uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching, watching this video and if you have any questions, please ask them on the forum or during the live sessions. Thanks for watching and goodbye.